What's going on friends? I hope you're having a great week or weekend whenever you're watching this. Today's video is going to be following us kind of for a day in our lives, but I also want to talk to you guys about a few things, so be sure to stick around for that little chat. We are about to just do some fun things and enjoy the rest of our afternoon. We have some things planned for the evening and then we'll be finishing up a little bit of learning later tonight. So I'll be showing you that and let's get into it. What do you want to do? I want to come check out some set that comes somewhere. There's not really much else to check out. These are all the clubs for kids. Like Spider-Man, Batman. Okay, any other homeschooling kids never have on any clothes while they're <laughs> at home? My son is always just wearing his underwear. That's it. All day long. What a perk, right? <laughs> We are about to read the book that he chose at Barnes & Noble. That's where I was just showing you guys that we went. Um, and he chose a Pokemon book and it's actually like two-sided. So half of the book is one story and the other half, like when you flip it over, is another story. So we're gonna read a few chapters of that and that'll just be how we check off like our reading for the day. We already did some phonics and what else? Um, with alpha blocks that's what he's whispering to me over here so we did our phonics with alpha blocks as well and I will like put a little screenshot or whatever if you don't know what alpha blocks is on YouTube they have a bunch of different videos and I will say that like it's not like a lesson style type of video it's more just little clips I believe they do have episodes but most of the videos are just like compilations of all different clips anywhere from like 30 seconds to a minute. So they, they'll they have like Magic E or um, blends. They have different digraphs and things like that that just like practice and then each letter is a little character and they have all these different little fun things that go along with them. So if your child is like just starting off reading or um, if you're about to be getting into reading and they're familiar with letters, that would be a fun little thing to watch. And instead of having just like mindless entertainment, I prefer to have something like that on. They also have something called number blocks if you haven't seen those either. And those are really fun too. That's what it's called, right? Number block? Yeah. And those, um, I feel like those are a little bit more on the lesson side of things. They do have like, um, very basic concepts. I'm trying to think of like how to describe this. So they have like basic concepts, but then they also have like counting by tens. And then once again, each number is its own little character. And then like when you get to the ones that are like counting by tens, like the 20 will be a character and it does show everything like in base 10 form. So if you've learned that, or if you're going to be learning that, that's also a fun little clip or um, kind of video to put on so that it's not something that's totally a lost cause. That's just TV time, but it kind of doubles as educational and entertainment. What's your biggest struggle when it comes to homeschooling? Is it planning, keeping up a routine, or simply just having the confidence to do everything that comes along with it? Let's talk today about getting over the humps of self-doubt and questioning all of the things that come along with homeschooling and talk about how you can find your confidence to keep going. If we don't know each other already, my name is Lauren. I am a former elementary school teacher turned homeschooling mom, and hopefully I can offer a little bit of guidance and confidence or support for you and your homeschooling journey. Today, I wanna to talk about feeling like you are enough. I know for myself personally, that's something that I've struggled with many different times and in many different areas of my life. But when it comes to homeschooling, I think it is hard to be our own critic and to critique everything that we're doing and putting in place for our children because we are in charge of their education and of their ultimate well-being when it comes to learning and schooling and all of the things so I want you to think to yourself, what are some of those things that you really struggle with feeling like you are enough? 
and how do we go about getting over that hump of feeling that way and reassuring ourselves not only through the proper actionable steps, but really the self-talk. What are some things that you hear inside of your head that may not really be true, but it's really the self-doubt talking? How do we get over those little inklings of this isn't really working out or I'm not the best fit for this to empower ourselves and to set the example for our kids to do the exact same thing? For me personally, trying to fit my educator mindset into a homeschooling schedule and routine was very, very tough. I felt like I'm not doing all of the things that I would be doing if I were in a classroom. I'm not doing as much as my child would be experiencing if he was in a traditional public school setting. But then I have to tell myself that's not what I'm trying to recreate. Our examples that we set for our kids, especially when it comes to expectations, are very, 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 very important. And I did not want to set the standard for my son that he has to recreate or constantly be chasing something that is not a good fit for his circumstances. And for me, that was something that I had to really talk to myself and coach myself through so that I could get rid of those expectations and what I felt were shortcomings when it came to homeschooling in order to set a new path and be successful in what we were doing and have that confidence so that we could continue and just keep improving in something that worked and was the best fit for us in our situation. I think a lot of the time when we do have that self-doubt is because we've seen other people set the bar for something or we've seen a, a very picture-perfect example of something that we think we have to attain also. And especially with social media, you guys know I talk about this all the time and that I really want to keep it real and not be the sugarcoat perfect filter type of person. So that is really where this talk is coming from because I know it's so easy to look at pictures and watch videos of a snapshot of something that happens in someone's lives or in someone's life or in their homeschooling situation and feel like, oh my gosh, that's so intimidating or that looks perfect. I bet their kids are doing a phenomenal job. I bet you that parent is just homeschooling like a rock star. And let's be very, very honest. That is not going to be the case all the time. There are going to be days where you feel like, oh my gosh, this was the perfect choice for us. But there may also be days or lessons and activities where you're like, what was I thinking doing this? And your kids may be thinking the same thing like, what was the point of that? But that's all part of the jam. That's how it goes in regular classrooms as well. So to have the reassurance that rough patches are going to happen, that hiccups are going to pop up along the way, I think it's so, so, so important that we remember that and that we tell our kids the same thing. Be very transparent with them. You don't have to be a parent superhero. You don't have to be perfect. And that's not a bar that we want to set or something that's attainable or achievable. So why are we stressing ourselves out about it? A few of the lessons that I've learned myself are patience, especially when it comes with self-doubt and wondering if I'm blank enough, and persistence. So when you do find exactly what works for you, stay at it. Don't fix it if it ain't broke, right? So if you find exactly what works for you or the self-talk that really cracks the code for you where you are reassured and confident and have a clear idea of how things can go in your homeschooling, then stay with it. Don't feel like you have to tweak something all the time. Don't feel like you need to revisit and start from square one every single day or every week or every unit. Whatever works for you is great. I'm so happy that that works for you and that is exactly what homeschooling should be. Your children are learning not only the content and the different topics that you're covering with them, but they're learning life skills. They're learning to be kind to themselves. They're learning to meet their needs. They're learning to answer all of the questions that they have and their specific, very detailed and 
interest-led scope of life and all of the different lessons that come along with that as well. So homeschooling is so much more than just what's on the paper or in the curriculum. And I think it's very, very, very important that you remember that and that you are kind to yourself first and foremost. So don't be afraid to create a new attitude or create a new approach to how you're speaking to yourself, how your thoughts are wired when you're talking about if you are enough, because guess what? You definitely are. And it shows already that you chose homeschooling for your kids, that your interest is what is best for them. Two plus two, so they're number 14, but two plus two it, uh, um, equals four. Okay, so very there, good. so there are two tins on one side and two tins on the other side. Okay, so that would be let me forty. Forty what? Forty four. Forty four. I didn't mean to mess it. I already have the color we we're gonna use. Uh, that's probably not a good idea to use such a dark one. Why, Why not? The numbers are dark. The numbers are dark. So what's gonna happen? This is what I'm wearing to dinner, and look how wrinkly my shorts are, so do what anyone else would do and straighten my shorts with my flat iron, duh. Who else does this? Um, yeah, should have done this like without them on, but... You know, I just put it on the lowest setting. Okay, that's not too bad. Not too bad, right? Because I'm gonna be like wearing them, right? Oh god. As long as the like hem part, oh gosh, is fine, then we'll be fine. Okay. Anyway, so. We are going to dinner with my parents because they're going to be out of town. We usually try to like get together on the weekend or my son goes over there sometimes um, on the weekends. So they're going to be out of town this weekend. So we decided to go to dinner tonight and kind of catch up from the week. And it's supposed to start raining. in like a couple hours. These pants are like a paper bag waist, but I wanted to wear something so I'm not freezing my behind off in the restaurant. So I don't have like anything on under this. I just have this little sweater situation. So I was hoping that like evens me out. So hopefully it's not freezing because I'm always cold when we go eat. And my pants are just gonna stay wrinkled. As long as the front is somewhat okay, then we're good. Um, yeah, so we're trying out this new Mexican food restaurant. That's my favorite kind of food, or I guess more like Tex-Mex. Um, so we're gonna go try out this new restaurant. We had such a delicious dinner. That place was so good, so we'll definitely be going back. Um, I have some laundry going, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video. I hope that you guys have enjoyed. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up if this is something that you liked, and I will see you in the next one.